Sir, uh, this bill I rise to support because it calls for a very constructive uh, body to be made. It's called the Committee for Foreign Investment so that uh, foreign investments uh, are no weighted no? No. for national security purposes. As it is, uh, sir, the uh, Home Ministry is usually involved when the foreign uh, investment is considered. But it is done in a uh, bureaucratic way, and in many times it's not even uh, adhered to. And I can give many examples uh, of that, uh, but I, I don't think that it's appropriate just now to give because it would have to take up a lot of time. But the fact is that we do need a committee of very well-placed people uh, who decide the national security angle, uh, whether to give clearance on the basis of national security uh, uh, for the purposes of uh, uh, this foreign investment. In uh, our country, foreign investment is not a very big proportion of total investment. It's still uh, below 5%. And uh, therefore, it's not a matter for which uh, it will have a big tragic effect or a large effect on the total investment if any, if any project is, uh, uh, is rejected because it didn't meet certain strict criteria of national security. I uh, would first like to begin by saying there are four kinds of foreign investment. The first type is what we call as the foreign direct investment where uh, foreign money uh, comes through companies to buy shares uh, in existing companies. And there are limits uh, prescribed uh, varying uh, from, uh, from, uh, uh, from company to company and the sector to sector. The second uh, uh, type of foreign investment is what is called as foreign portfolio investment, which uh, is really basically not for owning shares, but by buying stocks and bonds in the stock market. So it's basically a speculative thing. And this money uh, comes from abroad through, uh, uh, through what is now called as participatory notes, which uh, require a very close uh, scrutiny. The third thing is official flows, like from the IMF, World Bank, and uh, between governments. And that, uh, in my opinion, is now not a major uh, for, uh, for us a major consideration. During the 50s, 60s, 70s, we were literally depending on foreign, country, foreign countries. We were depending on the IMF and the World Bank. But now we are a much more developed country, and uh, we are not depending on it. So I won't say anything much about it. And finally is commercial loans, which are, which are really bank loans. And there, there is a uh, short-term loan and there is a long-term loan. Short-term loan, the, uh, the conditions are very limited. They impose uh, conditions by, by the banks. And therefore, it uh, is... Solicit uh, order, please, the House. When a member is speaking kindly, please don't disturb. Please. Uh, it's a dry subject, so there must be... Anyway. Uh, so therefore, the short-term, long-term... Uh, there is always a preference to for okay, short term. And this short term, you see, uh, sometimes people take money. It happened once in 1986 uh, when Rajiv Gandhi became prime minister and he opened uh, uh, the possibilities for companies to take short term loans from abroad. Uh, and, uh, but the companies took it for the purpose of long term uses, such like machinery and so on, because during the uh, period of the Soviet uh, model that we were practicing, uh, many of these uh, machines had become out of date. So to, uh, to buy new machines and so on, instead of taking long-term loans, they took short-term loans because it was easier. And that became due for payment uh, in, uh, within a short period of three to five years. And that's what led to the, uh, the, uh, the foreign exchange crisis of 1990. Uh, with which I am familiar because at that time I had become a minister and I had to directly deal with it as a minister for commerce. So therefore, 
they, that uh, short-term loans have ruined many economies. For instance, Japan uh, and East Asia had a major crisis in 1997, and uh, they, never, they hardly recovered even today from that big uh, collapse because they took short-term loans and invested in long-term projects like real estate and long gestation period uh, uh, machines. And then one day, uh, the American bond market raised the interest rate, so all these short-term loans wanted to come out. And uh, they were not in a position to uh, repay it. So Japan, then many companies collapsed, so did in, uh, in Korea and so on. And uh, that led to a collapse of the economy. So therefore, short-term loans are very dangerous, and they certainly need uh, a great deal of scrutiny. So with these four things, the, uh, what we, we, we must understand is when it comes to foreign direct investment, of which there is so much uh, new, uh, newspaper hype, we must make sure that it is not that causes unemployment in our country. Now take the case of Walmart. Uh, we may not be socialist, we may not be left wing, but we can still oppose Walmart coming to our country because Walmart takes finances from American banks, and that American banks uh, give loans at 2% interest rate. Then they come to our country, and they use our cheap labor. Uh, and uh, as a consequence, all those traders who are there, who have been practicing uh, this, this trade for a long time on very small margins, they all become unemployed. And Walmart, all it does is it buys from the market, of vegetables and puts up a nice showroom and uh, displays it there. It's a totally unnecessary technology. It was okay for China because their service sector had been destroyed during the communist, uh, strict communist rule. But for us, we have uh, crows and crows of uh, traders at the rural level. So this, uh, this, this foreign direct investment should not have been allowed, uh, but unfortunately, they have come in through the back door and today they're playing havoc. Similarly, uh, in the case of defense sectors, we have to make sure whether we want foreign direct investment or we want transfer of technology. And the transfer of technology is extremely important. And that uh, transfer of technology, we must see, said sometimes it might be better to buy the company which is producing these defense equipment rather than buy the products of these defense equipment. So I can give examples, but it's not necessary. But the most damaging thing which we have not been able to do anything about is what they call participatory notes, which is a foreign portfolio investment uh, method, which is essentially, which is essentially um, black money from India going abroad through the Hawala route and then coming back. How much more time you need? Yes, I just need about two minutes more. Uh, it is uh, uh, black money going from the Hawala route abroad and then coming back as participatory notes. Through, um, uh, through the, uh, from the uh, uh, country uh, which is called Mauritius. And Mauritius has no taxes uh, due. They don't have to pay taxes if, you, if a company comes from Mauritius. And then they play on our stock market. Most of our stock markets going up and down is due to these participatory notes. This should be in the national interest band because the money is mostly black money going through Hawala routes abroad and coming back in the name of uh, participatory notes, which doesn't even have who owns those notes. It's just got a, a number on it. So therefore, uh, uh, I would say that today it is very, very necessary. It's a, it's a subject which requires great deal of attention. And uh, in this short uh, period, I just want to say that it is a very good suggestion he has made to create a, a, a committee on, uh, on foreign uh, direct investment and national security, and therefore I support this uh, um, private member's uh, uh, bill, and I hope the House will pass it.